that's that. Welcome everybody to my third guest. And this is my podcast, as you've already seen. So you're, you know where I am and you know what my name is on this podcast. But I'm glad to say I've got Mr. Andy Johnson. Andy, welcome, buddy. Hi, Scott. How are you doing, buddy? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So just to say thanks very much for coming on, mate. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy as well. Your own thing. You've got your own, your own aim in life and that as well. What you're doing with your horse, I've got, I think it's fantastic, mate. No, so, I'm just going to start from the beginning, Andy. Um, if you introduce yourself growing up, um, what was it like, school time and all that, um, and also your transition for then and into the army. So, you can start okay. off with that, please. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Scott, first of all, thanks for having us on, buddy. Really no appreciate it. Um, so, I, I grew up in Edinburgh, um, and I, I eventually I joined the army at 16, but uh, going back before that, so at school, um, I didn't really excel at school. Uh, I was a bit of a nutter, um, maybe a bit, a bit wayward, um, but certainly no academic. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of struggled to see any correlation between what was going on in this school classroom to how is this preparing me for any form of life? You know, uh, you know, people joke about algebra. You never use it after school. Well. Uh, when I was at school, I was thinking, what use is this? Uh, you know, uh, history, who cares? You know, how is that going to get me a job? Um, and then it wasn't until kind of really late on in life, about probably about mid-20s, kind of 30, um, where I started looking at dyslexia. And I started looking at, what is this dyslexia thing? Because my spelling was always proper crap, right? Um, and, and my kind of sentence structure, and, and I always struggled reading. Couldn't could never get immersion in a, in a novel or anything like that, you know. People were reading books for fun, and I was like, what? what's the fun in that? Um, so I've never been diagnosed with dyslexia, but, but I know, kind of inside my head, that um, I, I am dyslexic, so I've got the gift uh, of dyslexia. And, and I would kind of encourage people that, that I've got dyslexia to see it as a gift because because we do think differently yeah. um, uh, and you you can use that as an ability and a skill rather than a kind of a disability if you like um, where do I get my information well I certainly don't read I, I still don't read for uh, for fun definitely not um, so I use TED talks I use YouTube uh, I use audiobooks so yep. when I'm in the van, um, I, I kind of listen to audiobooks. Um, even like, so I went on and recently I, I kind of studied and, and went through the Army Officer Selection Board uh, and slipped through the net and was successful. Um, but, but preparing for that, I used podcasts. Never read a paper, never read a magazine. Yep. Just used podcasts. So... So it's about doing what works for you, I think. And, and, and if I'd learned that younger, then things may have been different. Uh, you know, but I haven't got any regrets, certainly not. I've had a great life. Um, but I think technology is really helping now uh, with that. I think so. I think also, like, the people coming through now, like people in schools, have got the technology now. Back then, we never had that, Andy, you know what I mean? No. Like the iPads, the iMac, all that type of stuff. So nowadays, it's, it's helping people what they've got now to help. Like, even in yeah. the army, the guys coming through now, they're, they're awfully, awfully technical. You know what I mean? Yeah. When we through, it was, it was written some, but now it's all iPads, it's all, it's all, it's, it's yeah, changed. Yeah. It's, it's all kind of streamed, and, and you've got loads of different ways of learning, now, which is great. So, so kind of, um, at the end of school, so, uh, I, I kind of migrated uh, into the army, yeah. um, 16, got on the train, did me Waterloo. Um, never been to London before in my puff. Left Edinburgh, didn't me Waterloo. Had to get the tube. Um, sorry, for King's Cross. Had to get the tube for King's Cross across to Waterloo. Um, and, and I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, there's, there's hunters and punters on here. And, and nobody was talking to anybody. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, 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 I found it ludicrous. I still, I still remember it at 16 years of age, getting on that tube. And that's everybody was like poker face. Nobody talks. That's a skinny place, London. Like it, is. it can be. It can be quite. It can be first year. Like, wow, I was eighteen, Andy, when I joined. Yeah, yeah. 
and also I went to F Company and I can remember coming coming to Wellington Barracks and it was you and yourself. No, it wasn't you. So where was the guy that we took over again? That English boy, remember? Ian Park. Bro, Parky, brilliant. Also, he went, and also, you came in. But what I noticed for you, Andy, is, is you simplify things. And I don't know if that was part of your, your dislikes, I don't know, but you just made things a lot easier. I'm not saying he never done his job because he was good, but everybody's got a different way of doing things. But with you, you just simplify things better. So, for example, paperwork. His was like that. And I can remember you, and it was doing about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. I think mean, that's shit, like, like you say, everybody's got a different way of doing things. If it works for you, do it. You know what I mean? No, exactly, yeah. Aye. So I was I was taught um, early on, and this kind of stuck with me, as if you can't explain it to a four-year-old child, you don't understand it. No. And and what that's done through all my, my life has forced me to simplify things. Yep. Because why have ten sheets of paper when you can have one? Oh, you know? Uh, and things like, uh, what it always springs to mind when I talk about simplicity is, um, NASA spent like $30,000 deciding a pen to go into space and the Russians took a pencil. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so, simplify it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so just keep it simple. Don't don't get airs and graces about it. Just keep it simple and tell it how it is. Uh, and that kind of worked for me. Um, so I'm an only child, yeah. but I, I do think that I have got hundreds of brothers uh, and that's through service, because Aye. you do you do become brothers, you know, and, and through adversity or through shared journeys or just even through shared crazy parties or or, or, a, or a mental holiday where, where, where you kind of went off and did stuff that, thank, thank Christ, there wasn't any social media then, um, you know. Um, but, but that creates a kind of brotherhood, um, and you can't, you can't break that. No, you can't, I think... The platoon back then, Andy, it was a good platoon because we had a platoon of mix and a platoon of jocks, and it was fantastic, man. Even even in Germany, it was good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can see company then was probably the best company in the battalion then. I think so. Then, because yeah. you're Jason Jason Manassi, who else was there? The other platoon, sir. Uh, Mickey Nutter. Brilliant. You know what I mean? What a guy, man. You know what I mean? And that I think back then there was just it's the way I can I can explain it. Just you feel like nobody could touch you. That's the way you felt in that kind of company. And even the yeah. platoon, you, you and Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott went for selection and passed it. Yeah, yeah. A, a gentleman, you know what I mean? You, you just felt, listen, we've got to war, I, well, I feel safe with these guys. You know what I mean? But, I mean, Jim Scott was a fantastic operator, uh, you know, and st still is. Uh, I kind of loosely talked to him now and again. He lives out in the States now. Um, but, but, you know, what an operator. I mean, a brain, the, a brain the size of a planet. He's just thought the punter that you should have hated because, you know, he was good at sport, he was intelligent, he was good looking. So <laughs> it was just funny. <laughs> It's just sort of bloke that you think, right, there's no, I'm not, how do they compete with that? But, but actually, uh, him and I kind of got on really well. Uh, there was a bond there, Andy. There was a good bond there. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Re really strong bond. But we, from the outset, we agreed that if the parents didn't get on, the kids would suffer. Aye. So, and, Aye. and, and that's, that's the kind of way we operated. Uh, and we, we kind of merged as well because I, I remember... Um, a kind of specific, we were training in Senelaga, uh, and he was stuck in the turret of the warrior, uh, and it was to go into a platoon attack, blank, um, I, and, and I got out and commanded the platoon, and he stayed in the warrior, because he couldn't get out, and, and there was no dramas with that, but but that's that's kind of being comfortable, being a good good rapport as a, as a leader, uh, yeah. you know, he was a great leader, um, but he also had strength and, and kind of commitment to my leadership ability and it wasn't an issue you know some other some other officers might have been oh no 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 give me this turret i need to lead i need to lead but but jim was never like that you know uh, no. and we got on really well i was it was one of the boys eh? like even even the commitment that that defense section in canada and he was there right next to you in the trench you yeah. know what i mean including yourself and you know what i mean if i had to if i had to pick an officer that would buy him you know what i mean or maybe Colonel Leask, another one, brilliant. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, James Leask, yeah, good operator. You know, uh, another good operator, definitely. And, and Chris Bell as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, Chris Bell, uh, another strong, strong leader. Um, so the next thing I want to kind of go on to is, is veterans. Yeah. Now, 
So towards the end of my regular uh, time, I, I was the RSM of the Army Recovery Capability. So, so all the injured boys and girls. Um, and, and they're not all injured in combat, you know. We, we had people with cancer, we had road traffic accidents. Yeah. You know, just societal injuries, as, as we kind of call them. But where I have a quandary is that society believes that all veterans are broken. Now, why does society believe that? I think they believe that because um, the press pushes that. But, but where does the press get this from? Well, the service charities need money, right? Yeah. So they need the papers to tell them, to tell society that they need money. But what that does is that creates a misconception in society that all veterans are broken, um, which means that veterans sometimes struggle for employment because of that. But also it means that uh, Uncle Johnny isn't he going to let his nephew join? Because he's like, no, you're not joining them because you only end up smashed or nuts. You know, and, and, and that, I think, is, is a kind of poison chalice that the UK has kind of got itself into. I mean, yes, I know that we live and we've operated in a demanding job uh, and, and we've lost brothers uh, and we've seen a lot that you should never see. Uh, and for some people, that has an impact. But there's support there. And I still stand by the fact that every veteran is a massive asset to any civilian company. Because we are different. I just, like I find, what I found difficult, Andy, is it's a different pace of life. You know, yeah. they, buy, they would take a wee bit longer. And I can, I can deal with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now I say, well, listen, this is Scott, you know, I'm in the This is this is civilian life. This is what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's normal. And if I, if I can help that person, then go and do it. But that, that's what I struggle with is, is trying to adapt to this, Andy. You know what I mean? And it's not yeah. really, and I'm and I'm I'm not struggling, but I'm still finding it hard. Because sometimes yeah. when you, when you do things, well, wait a minute, no, that's no. But like you say, it's I think society now is uh, uh, like army veteran boys are not case. They label you that sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, but you know where a veteran or ex-army, you're going to get 100%, they're going to be punched, or they're going to be a maclet, and they're going to get 110% all the time. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. Know I, mean? I think you, uh, with a veteran, you get what it says. You get says what's on the tin, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, there's no, there's no sort of hidden agenda. We are who we are. Uh, and, and nine times out of ten, we'll, the, the only thing that an employer needs to worry about is his own job, because... Um, within sort of five years, that, that veteran's probably going to take over. Probably. You know? right. So, um, that role, so, wise, or supervisor, or I, whatever, that's right. You know what I mean? Because also, I think we can adapt. We can adapt, but when I'm talking about adapt, it's like people, like, can have people laughing in that, but that's in a good way. Like, like basic stuff for me, I've never bought a shop myself, never. Yeah. So, bills, mortgage. Shop, painting, all that type. I've not done that before, never. So, no. coming up, my mum and dad obviously, I, I left at a young age and I came back and they were helping me. Yeah. So, it's good I still got them and my family and stuff. But I had to learn how to do that on my own, Andy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just basically, like saving, like saving money. And it was part yeah. my stepdaughter, Erin, said, Listen, this is what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. And it's working great. And she's been actually fantastic with us. But I still struggle with it's. Just get the grips with thing like if somebody says something I'm like that, but why are you saying that? what are they I think too much some maybe sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe overthink it, you know what I mean? Um like also like people at the work, everybody argues, you know what I mean? Like I'm a joint the trade. Uh, yeah. I work with a couple here and they're also because you're an outsider and you're no fee here. Um they think they can bring you down. Well wait a minute, I'm not a wee boy, I'm 43. I serve my country for six and year pal, who are you? You know what I mean? Some junk yeah. you the road, you know what I mean? So there is I've noticed that I'm I can approach things better and I can talk to people better than before. Yeah. It's like, it's better for you talking to, you know what I mean? But just, oh, you can't do that nowadays, you know what I mean? No, um, no, and it, and it doesn't get you anywhere, really. No. I mean, um, so, so I'm going to move on to a kind of holistic coaching. Um, but before yeah. I do, um, so if you just stick that first slide up, Scott. Uh, yeah. That's up, Andy. So, so this is. 
as it says in the top left, you know, what is holistic coaching? But where do we where do we get this from? Well, you know, holistic um, for me is kind of all encompassing, right? Yeah. Uh, and coaching is working with an individual or a team in order to optimize their abilities. Right. So it's got nothing to do with my abilities. It's got everything to do with their abilities. Um, and I just come into the room and use clearly defined models. I use questions, open questions, and I will get the individual or the team to think really deeply and, and maybe and, and try and transfer it from kind of negativity to positivity. Um, so as it says there, you know, uh, it's honest and impartial. So, so I, I never have an agenda with a client. You know, that, that's not what it's about. Um, it's always uh, objective uh, and it's structured. And I use the term journey because I don't do failure. Failure doesn't exist. It's just a setback. Okay, so if something doesn't work, then you haven't failed. The only time you fail is if you didn't do anything. So that's what I inside believe it. Um, it's it's kind of limitless and free thinking. Uh, there isn't a box. So people say, oh, I think outside the box. I've just squished the box. Box doesn't exist. Stood on it. It's gone. Yeah. Um, sustainable changes. So, you know, like crash diets. They didn't work. You know, you can lose two stain in, in, in like two months. Um, but I guarantee you'll put three back on. Right. As long as it's, you know, if it's not done right, then, then it's not going to be sustainable. Um, it's got to be targeted to the requirement. So, so it's about, initially it's about me working with the individual to find out what their requirement is. And that's where the effective questioning comes in. And it's like pulling, pulling a, a woolly jumper. So I'm pulling the wool until I get to the knots. And then once we get the knots, I'll, I'll work with you to kind of untangle the knots. Uh, and it's really understanding the client because this is a people centric process. You can't coach machines. No. You can only coach humans, you know? Yeah. Um, so migrating into the next bit, doing how does it work? So I facilitate productive conversations. You'd be amazed how many people can communicate. And, and technology is fantastic, but technology has also eroded our ability to communicate. I just took over on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People will hide behind PowerPoint and you're like, okay, nice slide, lovely. You know, all these stars spin and stuff like that, you know, everything goes lovely. But what does it mean? It's not real, is it? It's not yeah. real, it's not real, no. It's not real. And I, and I go back to when, when you said about um, the amount of paperwork that I had uh, as a platoon sergeant in relation to maybe what other parts of the organization used. That's because I didn't believe in hiding behind anything. You know, it's a, for me, it was about the platoon. Aye. It wasn't about having folders with sticky labels and everything like that. You know, you just write on the folder what it is. It doesn't have to have a cap star on it because we know what the cap star is. You know? Aye, it was simplified, Andy. I think it was, to you, it was more simplified. Eh? You know just, I mean? just simplify, just write it, write it what it is. You know, use a pencil. <laughs> so uh, getting down there it says normal language is used to achieve clarity so again that I go back to I, I would just speak to guardsmen as a as a guardsman yep. you know because at the end of the day in the army all you are is just slightly older and in a slightly different position you still come for the same route still the same trees um, and, and just use language, you know, uh, and in business, people, people get all kind of fancified using big, massive words. A, because I'm dyslexic, I can't spell them. So, so I just use wee words. Um, 
but it works for me. Um, and if I go back to the kind of being able to explain it to a four-year-old, yep. so if you can fundamentally explain your point in basic English, maybe use a diagram. I mean, I use whiteboards all the time. You know, blokes and blokes and girls that work with me now are like, he's a maniac for his whiteboards. But for me, the whiteboard is just a way of expressing it. Aye, getting it out there, Andy, because it's something you, yeah. can, you can pick it up and it's, it's so I write things down. Yeah. Down. So like, you sent me that, I've, I've got that in there now, and once it's in, that's it, you know what I mean? No, exactly, yeah. You know, we, we, we write things down because, um, so if you think about your brain as a, as a computer, it's only got so much hard drive. Yeah. And no wonder it gets all kind of fragmented and stuff like that. It needs defragging. And the only way you can defrag it is to write stuff down or, or type it out or speak it into your, into your phone, but just externalise it. Um, yeah. But what I use the whiteboard because if I write it on a whiteboard, then I can get my team in and I can then say to them, what do you think? So they can't even see what's going on inside my head. But they can see, yeah, exactly, they can see it on the whiteboard. Uh, and, and they can kind of, they, they can add value. Um, uh, Andy, see, see during your obviously your army parading that I'll fucking you know, ask you now, because like even your process, the, your promotion and stuff, did you have to let people know that you were by like, slicer to that? Because when I done my cut off course, I've got green paper, and that helped me. Like obviously, people said they're different colours of paper, help them. But were you done it, was that, was anything that in place, but were you done your promotional courses or that? No, no. no so... So nothing, nothing was there at that stage, but but it was paperwork wasn't such a wasn't such the priority when I went through kind of initially like Lance Cottle courses and stuff like that. It wasn't until I kind of got up to the platoon sergeant level and things like that where kind of paperwork was was important and things like that. And by then, I, I was an absolute ninja at coping strategies. So so I'd learned how to get around it. Um, but fortunately, in our, in our kind of line of work, uh, and even on education courses, I remember uh, going on my education course as a warrant officer, and uh, the first week I struggled massively because it was all computer this, computer that, Excel, Word, everything yeah. like that. So I struggled, but I got through it. Uh, and then the second week was all about presentations, debates, analysing this and expressing that and I flew it, smashed that out of the park. And the people that were flying in the first week who could design a spreadsheet, well they could design you a rocket, but they wouldn't be able to light it. Um you know. Hi. So so it's, it's you know it's apples and pears mate. Uh, but I think now that the military is is far more geared up for uh, inclusivity uh and and just making those simple alterations like you say, different club paper. Um, or, or kind of, you can verbally assess somebody in the same way as you can do it in writing. Uh, and I've done that. You know, I, I get people in now, uh, and I'll just ask them the questions. Yeah. So maybe some people, because some people get really, you know, they get really wound up, and they can't, they, they just can't think when they're when they're faced with an exam paper. But if you sit them down and ask them one question at a time, they can tell you the answer. It's, it's like yourself, I was, I was quite like that when I was, obviously a guardsman, but I got to the, to the pub bike, down to the, the car course that you sent us on. Kenny, yeah. he, he was my DS, um, and it's funny, because he was a nice guy, he was like, listen, if you're, and his words were before he even just started, if you're struggling, if you've got this, this and that, let me know. And also I said at the back, can he helped us? Uh, you know, yeah. With him, with him doing that, also, yeah, I passed that course, uh, like map, 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 like bit course reporting, like doing your course reports, all that type of stuff, your patrols, all that type of stuff. So he he noticed that, you know, it was the green paper, eh? and that yeah. was and it's that just something as simple as that helped me. You know what yeah, I mean? exactly. But, you know, brilliant. I mean, in the army and in the commercial world now, um, everything should be all about success, and the majority of people in the world want everybody else to succeed. Yeah. Very few people wake up in the morning and think, how can I stitch him up? You know, there isn't that many nasty 
assholes out there that, that are kind of like that, fortunately. So, so the majority of people are, are kind of really into uh, helping others. So, so that kind of explains my holistic coaching. But yeah. what, what, what do I offer? Uh, what do I offer? So, so um, it says at the bottom there, client request, uh, requested bespoke delivery means. So I've got kind of products that, that I can use. Um, so I use on, online one-on-one -on -one or team sessions, face-to-face um, one-on-one -on -one or team sessions, outdoor walk and talk sessions, uh, family sessions, motivational speeches, motivational presentations on leadership, team dynamics, uh, my journey, uh, things like that. Kind of after dinner motivational speaking, things yeah. like that. I, I can do all that. But ultimately, uh, as I go back to the kind of top left, it's all about targeting the requirement. So all I need is for people to come to me and say, I'm thinking about this and, and I'll work with them. And then whatever product is the right thing for them, that's what we do. So I've got kind of a shelf with yep. products on it, but I've also got a pencil and a bit of paper and I'll just make a product. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, but it's, it's all behind scientific tools uh, of psychology and things like that. But how it's delivered to the client um, can can vary, uh, and that's all about the individual, really. Yeah. So is it also will it be face to face as well, Andy? And yeah. So, the, so predominantly do online, um, and the reason I do online is to increase my footprint. Yeah. Um, so so I can coach anybody in the world online. So like um, calls and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I do Zoom, Teams. Uh, any kind of online platform, share screens, uh, email products, they, they use products and then they send them back to me. So I give you a question set, you send it back to me and then that, that kind of helps me understand. Um, alter, otherwise, uh, I just ask you the questions, you tell me them uh, and I call that a harvest session. Yep. So a harvest session is very much me asking questions and you giving me the information. And that's me on understand mode. So I need to understand you as a person or your team uh, as people before we can start uh, working and before we can kind of understand. So that's the kind of harvest phase. Yeah. Um, we then kind of go into the work phase and most clients will do a weekly uh, initially for four weeks and that kind of gets the ball rolling. They then kind of go to fortnightly uh, or monthly uh, and then we're in a kind of maintenance mode. Um, but I coach to independence, so I'm never going to make mass money, right? Because to make mass money out of coaching, you need to coach to dependency. So that means is I will coach you so you don't need me. So I'm not going to make money out of you forever. Once it's done, I so is it a course, Andy? What's the maximum length? This depends on the client, obviously. Depends on the client. Um, you know, so most uh, is like a three month, uh, most is like a three month, um, and then but they might reach back for, yeah. for a review session, um, and they might come back, they might, they might get me in to do a day in their place of work with a team. Um, and I'll do some team dynamics and stuff like that and, and, and leadership uh, and coach individuals, do individual sessions, group sessions over a day and then maybe come back for half a day two weeks later as a review session. Um, but there's loads of different ways of doing it because everybody's journey is at a different pace. Yeah. And it's really about them. Yeah. And do you think... Because I was thinking as well, obviously, like the, the my type of thing, but with your type of, like your mindset and stuff like that, and also yeah. your diagrams and everything like that, and your, and your coaching. Would you ever think about going, like helping guys leaving the army or leaving the battalion to, to get that mindset as well? Just, yeah. just a, if you ever thought about doing that, you know what I mean? Because I think it would be quite good for that type of thing, for somebody leaving the forces. Yeah. To come in and listen, it's a big, big world out here, it's totally different, you know what I mean? 
so so if any, you know if anybody uh, wants to wants to get in touch with me uh, who, who's a veteran or who's regular uh, and is looking to transition or who's a reservist uh, yeah. and is looking to transition then get in touch with me right um, uh, and what I'm offering there uh, for the veteran and the serving community is a thing called village rates um, so so I use village rates and what that means is that your pricing and your costing will be next to nothing because somebody else in the village is paying yours, yeah. okay? Um, because I, I'm a brother of the military uh, and that's the way it is. Um, so, so I'm willing to work with anybody. Um, and, and as I'll come on to in the kind of last slide, uh, my initial bit is a, is a free 30 minute session. Yeah. So in that 30 minute session, then we can start to understand the requirement and that's when we talk about the kind of products, the costs, uh, and things like that. I am not about costs. Uh, I'm about making a difference. Uh, I've got a full-time job. So this is uh, a part-time job, but it's my way of giving back as well. Yeah. See, that's what we do as well. Is, like you say, we can help one person, eh? you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not, and I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm not trying to cop anybody. I know there's boys out there that have podcasts. And I said, listen, I'm, this is helping me. If I can help one person, I'm not doing it for money either. You know what no, I mean? Exactly. And if a sponsor comes, a sponsor comes, I'm, I'm no bothered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Day, this, is, this is real, this is raw, this is me. Like you said yourself, it's raw. No, and I said, yeah. And this is what, what I want to get across to people. That everybody's known a good place. Uh, if, if you're in a good talk, you know what I mean? It's, it's like you said, we've, we've lost good mates and stuff like that. And it's, yeah. And with your, type of, with your type of course, I think it would even help me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that, I would, I would love to come along, you know yeah. what I mean? Or the Zoom call, whatever, your meetings, whatever, and, and try it. Because I think there's still something there that's it's not right in myself, I can feel it, you know what I mean? No, no, cool. No, we, we, we can set something up, no worries, no worries. Aye. Um, Scott, if you do, can you just go to the fried egg slide? Yeah, so I'll the, that's the, mince, the mindset one, Andy, now, yeah? No, the one before that is the fried egg. Right, that's it up, that's it up now. Okay, so the, the fried egg model um, is, is how I uh, teach people to, to kind of accept, all right? Yeah. And this is really relevant to, um, you were talking earlier on, Scott, about uh, in the work environment that you're like, why is it taking them so long? And, uh, and, and you know, and, and things like, you know, you and I do stuff online. Uh, and, and somebody will come on and say, uh, you're a dobber, uh, you, you know, what, why are you doing that? Well, okay. Um, so, so I use the fried egg model. Um, and it's about control, influence, accept. So the yolk of the egg yep. is everything in your life that you can control. And it's the smallest part. So you can control your attitude you can control your breathing. You can control you. Not your okay? Yeah. And the next part, the white of the egg, which is slightly bigger than the control, is influence. So you can influence your partner, for example. You know, you can say to, to them, do you want to go for a walk? You can't even make them go for a walk. No. But you can influence them by having that conversation. And you can influence more than you can control. And you need to think about the best way to influence. Is it via voice? Is it via email? How are you going to approach it? Sometimes people get influenced wrong by using an email, for example, because an email is very difficult to interpret. Yeah. You know, the written word, it, it, it's, no got, it's, emo, it's no got an emotion in its own. No. So we will attract an emotion to it. No. Like Whereas someone, if I speak to you... Yeah. It's like you say, you, you get a text and you're like, well, he's been snappy, but he's not. So you can't no, even tell no, yeah. that person has, has been like, oh, not Andy, so... You know, so how you write it and how they've read it may be entirely different. Yeah. Um, so I would always encourage influence to happen face-to-face. -face. 
uh, or at least on the phone, so you can at least put human to human interaction there. Yep. Um, the next part, so the rest of the frying pan, and and it is hot, and it burns you, and it frustrates you. Yep. Because you can't control it and you can't influence it. So in order to lessen the the frustration, you need to just accept it. So if somebody's kind of, uh, if they're late and you're like, okay, that's irritating me and I can feel that building up, well, just let it roll. Yeah. If it's, if it's no impacting on you, then just let it roll. See, that's one of my problems is timekeeping. Like if you're on a, on a shift and that person, yeah. uh, it just, that's what I need to learn. I'm still learning. I've been out since 2013, Andy, but I'm, I'm still struggling. That yeah. Like you're saying, well, if that person's, because it could be a reason he's like, the bus could have broke down or something yeah. serious, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. And, and, and my, 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 my nana said to me uh, years ago, you know, I was probably like the height of this desk, um, I, and she would say to me, take a deep breath. Right. Well, actually, that, that still applies, you know? Um, and now I, I try and practice. If something irritates me, then I'll breathe in, I'll hold it, and then I'll blow it out. And I, if I can do that two or three times, if it's still irritating me, then I think, okay, how can I influence this no happening again? Yep. But what I need to do is reduce my emotions. Because if I go up to them and say, why were you late? like that, then then they're always going to come back defensively. Because I've gone in and go, why, why are we late? They, they're going to come back to me defensively. Whereas if I just kind of take the emotion out of it and say, <coughs> what happened, mucker? I was expecting you here 10 minutes ago. What happened? And then they can say, oh, it's the bus man. He's off his nut. You know, uh, and I'll say, well, Look, we're trying to make some dollar here, eh? you know, we're trying to make some coin. So could you maybe get an earlier bus tomorrow? <laughs> you know, and you can have that dialogue then. Yeah. Whereas if you go in emotive, they're going to answer with emotion. And then you just end up to and fro and to and fro and, and nobody gets anywhere. So, so it's accepting that it's happened or accepting that maybe that's important to them. But time, if you reduce the time, you'll reduce the emotion. So if you just let the time and let it go, then you'll you'll reduce the emotion. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, do you want to change to the mindset one, buddy? Yeah. That's so that's up now, Andy. Cool. So mindset. Right, uh, you know, Scott and I are soldiers. Uh, the mindset is a sniper at the battlefield. All right, so this, the, the mindset is the most powerful asset, the most powerful weapon that you've got, and you control it. So you control your mindset. It's inside the yoke, tiny portion of your life, but you control it. But if you can harness the power of your mindset, then you will grow beyond belief. Now, I'm just going to kind of go through the, the, the acronym that I use uh, for mindset. Yep. And it kind of unlocks how we achieve a positive growth mindset. That's what we're after. So first of all, you maximize positive self-talk. So that is about no being overcritical on yourself. And it's about looking for positivity. The glass, excuse me, the glass should always be half full. I don't do the half empty. No. I don't do if and I don't do maybe. It's not an if, it's a when. It's not a maybe, it's a will happen. And, and, and these are just kind of very subtle word changes, but huge mindset shifts. 
And it's about looking for positivity. If something goes wrong, there'll be an opportunity there. It's an opportunity. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I kind of, uh, maybe non-PC, but uh, an example that springs to mind is, can you, can you imagine being in 2019 and owning a company that made face masks? <laughs> you know? And then COVID hits the world. Bonginaire. Hunters won the lottery. Bonginaire, aye. <laughs> you know? But from, from that negativity of COVID has come an opportunity for him or her. Well, they've been a positive, haven't they? You know what I mean? You know, but so, so in every negative, there is a positive. It's finding it. So that's my problem. Um, that's my problem, Andy. I need to find it. Eh? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not me. It's, it's, it's drummed in. Fight or flight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's... Um, what's that? But I know now, out in the cemetery, you can't be like that. You know what I mean? You can't be because there's, people think different out here. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you and said, it's, it's, your thinking mindset, you know what I mean? And I've, I've been watching some of this stuff. And it's, and it, asks, it makes you think. Well, it's right. You know what I mean? Kind of, if somebody's peed you off, and you're thinking about it, well, why are you thinking about it all the time? It's yeah. happening. You know what I mean? You just, you just move yeah. on. You know what I mean? So I... Like, yeah, just move on, move, move on from it. Um, you, you know, time only goes one way. So, yeah. so the next one is inspiration from all avenues. Now, I get my inspirations from from loads of different avenues. I mean, today uh, I, I was just looking at on, uh, and I follow this guy on Twitter, and and he's been in Everest base camp for two weeks, waiting for a a window to summit Mount Everest, right? Now, this guy's an ex-Gurkha soldier, um, above knee, double amputee. And, and he's just left base camp about probably about, uh, we're probably five years away now. Uh, and, and they've moved up to camp one and he will summit Mount Everest. The guy's got no legs. Well, that's, that's his mindset, that he can still do that, you know what I mean? Exactly. And, and if that doesn't inspire you, then you're that's made of good. You know what I mean? That, um, guy, that guy's been through that trauma of whatever happened to him, but he's, yeah. it's not stopping him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, can that's a bucket list now. That's a bucket list. You know what I mean? But he's doing that. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And and it can be it can be small things as well. You know. Um, so what what appears small is massive for some people. You know. Um, in COVID, uh, there was a there was a lot of people that struggled to leave the house once they could yeah because because they became fearful and they became uh they were only safe inside their house and my grandma's like that so my mum and dad they were quite they were like that and they never left the house like yeah and I, and I was i was back then i was struggling but you think with the lockdown and that you, you probably find that the mental health just went through the roof you know what i mean no because you were no present, but you couldn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? You so the, the requirement, the requirement for mental health went through the roof. Aye. You're right during COVID, um, but so so what what we saw in the coaching world was people. Very few people stagnated. People either went up or down. Very few people plateaued because, and it was a bit mindset. But you, you, you're not choosing your mindset unless you've been trained and being coached and being developed on it. Because if you remember rightly, throughout COVID, you could go out and exercise. Aye. So you were allowed to. I walk your dog and all that, aye, and everything like that. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I was working right through it as well. And it was yeah. weird, just a weird feeling. You know what I mean? But yeah. the people that, that positively grew in COVID... Yeah were active. People that went down were either inactive or were overactive. Yeah, didn't do much. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of NHS workers, you know, God bless them, you know, I mean, I take my hat off. You know, then, then people were, uh, some of them were staying in hotels to protect their own family whilst looking after other people's families, you know, and I take inspiration from people like that. Uh, 
you know, doing ordinary things and at extraordinary times. Like my partner, she's a paramedic up here and doing the things. The yeah. stories she tells you, you know, what? what? Yeah. The stuff that she's seen, like RTAs, like that, like, like, I'm thinking like the mad trauma, but you think, but she's coming home and she's dealing with me, with my troubles, but she's doing that at the same thing. Yeah. And she was off with her, with her, with her back, she, her, she had a pull-ups disc. Yeah. And she was still supporting me and doing this and doing the job. And I, I'd like to say, I just take my heart off of them, eh? You know what I mean? Unbelievable. No, definitely. It's, and also, it must have been so hard for them, but what, what, like the people dying and stuff like that. Mm. Like, as soon as it hit the UK, people were dropped like flies. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's scary to think. But like you say, people that came with the mindset, listen, no, it's not going to beat me. It's not going to, I, I want to go out and get warm. No, some, sure. some people weren't locking themselves away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, people have got to say, like, something wrong with them, obviously. That's, that's, when they're in that, their own homes and that, that's like, like my gran. She never went out for the, the whole time. Yeah. And, and same with my parents, that they were. They were quite worried, but yeah, but, but the mindset is what you said, not to, not to give up and keep going and keep your, keep yourself active. You know what I mean? No, exactly. And, but, but, so the next one, uh, Scott, is so it's no acceptance of failure. Yeah. So 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 I don't accept failure. It's it's no it's no it's no a philosophy for me. It, it, it's a word, yeah, but but it's definitely not an end state. So fail, um, I draw from that, fail is first attempt in learning. Yep. That's what fail stands for in my brain. Um, and I don't accept failure. That's quite good, that, that mnemonic. Like you, that's, I've seen that in your, some of your feeds, it's quite good, Andy, as well. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's simple, it's effective. Um, but, but failure, so, so Scott, you can ride a bike, yeah? I can ride a bike. I guarantee we both fell off at one stage. And we keep going. Right. When we were learning, yeah. when we got back on the bike, and we learned. So even as a kid, you know that failure's not an end state. Uh, it's like when I, it's like when you and when I first came off my, my car, the injury, you were like, ah, I bet you'll heal. You'll go back and do it again. Yeah. And I've done it, you know what I mean? So yeah. even back then you were you were doing that Andy, but was not as much as you are now, but you were still saying, Well, listen, that's happened. You'll heal, but you'll go back. And I did, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. it was that mindset was saying, Well, if he's if he's believing in me, but well, I'm I'm gonna show the show them that I can do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's no it's not an end, it's a it's a setback. Aye. Um go on, Scott. Yeah, so I'm saying it'll be my last, you know what I mean? And also you yeah, can set back to happen right through your life, you know what I mean? But I think we need to learn this, like for me, is to keep going, no give, no give up easy, you know what I mean? Because there's been a few times I've been like, ah, I've had enough, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And also with the support of my family and also the NHS and that, just, uh, it's, it's, it's been hard down there, but there's been something to say, listen, this isn't you, you know what I mean? Keep going, you have to keep going. Yeah. With your family and your kids and at the start that you get that mindset, you know what I mean? Failure's not an option, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Never, you know? So, so uh, another way of looking at it is like a step ladder. Yeah. So you know, if you're climbing up a step ladder, um, and, and that's that's your life. So you're climbing up a step ladder, different different things in life, up the ladder to try and climb and climb and going for your growth. And the ladder the ladder starts to wobble. You would just stop, wouldn't you? I just I just stopped it. I just I just stop you know, it, it, it settles. Aye. And and then. It stops wobbling, and then you can start again. So, so that's what we should do in life. If it starts to wobble, and like we're we're shattered, you know, we're, we're absolutely knackered. Have a sleep. Have a sleep. Yeah. Get up. When you get back up, I guarantee it will look different because. What you've done is you've recharged your battery and you've stopped that ladder wobbling and it's it's steady and then you can climb again. So so the next one is decisive actions. So yeah. no action, no growth. Simple as that. You know, you can talk. Talk is cheap. Um, and But without action, you're never going to achieve growth. You've got to 
take the bull by the horns and, and have a go. You know, no boxer has ever won a fight without getting in the ring. Uh, risk of it, just taking a risk or well, no risk, but yeah. can push Boxing yourself. Boxing favours the brave. Aye, it's like pushing yourself a wee bit further, you know what I mean? Yeah. Trying, to, trying to motivate yourself and stuff like that. I and mean, I've found over the last past maybe a few months, I've, I've been finding that quite difficult, Andy. Yeah. But now that I've been like, listen, there's people worse off than yourself, you know what I mean? But I thought you see that guy climbing Mount Everest, he, he's the limbs and he's still doing that. Yeah, exactly. But, you know what I mean? So it's... As I said, the day I was watching today, he said, anything's possible, you put your mind to it. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, if you, uh, one of the things that I, I think about um, is Neil Armstrong, right? First man on the moon, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So imagine how he felt when he was on the inside of the spacecraft and he was about to open the door. Imagine that thought process. Nobody's ever been out there. No. And and he's got to twist that handle and and push that door. He could have been sucked away to oblivion. You know? Can you can you just imagine what was going through his head then? But also his mindset was to get this done. You know but I mean? he took that decisive action and he opened that door. And it's like every marathon. You know, starts with one step, doesn't it? Aye. So, I think, you know, as you say, you're, you, you, we're, we're all the same. And we all find it difficult at times to take actions. But start with a small action. Small step. Deep breath. Small yeah. step. Deep breath. Small step. Deep breath. And keep it going. Because if you pour... Like, a, you know, a glass of water. So I've got a glass of water here, right? Um, so the glass of water there, you can, you can fill that up drip by drip. So if every drip is a tiny action, over maybe 100 drips, you'd have that much water. Yeah. So they all add up, all these wee steps, uh, they, they, they all add up as, as we go along, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next one that is really big for me and really important for me is um, something that blokes are crap at. <laughs> All right. um, seek oh. assistance Aye. and or guidance when needed. Right? Ask we are I... absolutely crap at it. Aye. Yeah. But why, why are we crap at it? Well, the reason we're rubbish at it is because it's been ingrained in us since we were kind of knee-high a grasshopper to to be the strong species. Absolute rubbish. You know, women talk, blokes don't. I can assure you, big boys cry. Definitely, like. You know, I, I, I can assure you. Um, and and, and I, there's nothing to be ashamed of, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm proud of the fact that I, I, I display my emotions. And people will say to me, Andy, how come you have all the answers? And I'm like, I haven't got all the answers, but I've got a good phone book. Aye. You know? I'll just ask somebody. And, and, and that's what I get back to my network. So keep your network large. I can talk as much as I it's Like, I was like, Andy, I wasn't there for, like, going, like, she would say, you need to go. No, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me. But, yeah. also, but now I'm, I'm more open. I'm not just an open book, but I'm thinking where I could approach things, I, I can approach it better. Say, listen, well, I, I was in a bad way, I was this way before, I would just try to ignore it. And it built up, and it built up, and built up, and that's, yeah. probably, that's probably the wrong place to be, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. So there's a, there's a, um, a couple of philosophies. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. Now, I, I believe in post-traumatic growth. Now, what does post-traumatic growth mean? Well, it means that if you go through a traumatic event, then you can turn that to give you the energy and the drive for more growth, 
than you would have achieved before you went through that event. Yep. So like um, the, you know, the, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the ferry years ago that kind of the back doors were open and it flooded. Uh, and, and there was, you know, there was, there was people killed and I bet there was oh. a lot of survivors. Alex Ray. Uh, I, I, I can't, I, I can't remember the name of it, but, but anyway, th th so this, this ferry, um, there was a lot of survivors. Uh, and they did a study into the survivors, um, and the majority of those survivors went on to have fantastically successful lives. And, and when they were asked about it, 90% of them said, I, I could have died, but I didn't. And I was determined to make it worthwhile. Yeah. And that was post-traumatic growth. And that was kind of the birth of it. Uh, there's been a lot of studies in America uh, into it. There's been a lot of studies in King's College London uh, into it as well. Uh, and, and it's a real thing. But definitely, you, you've got to put your hand up. You've got to get on that phone. But nobody's an island. And you have to have that mindset that Asking for assistance is a sign of strength, not weakness. See, that's what I thought I was being weak, but now you're not. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, and, I, and I'm glad I've done it, Andy. What a difference. You know what oh, I mean? Definitely. And it also, definitely. I think it also with the army, like, I would never say a bad word about the army, but somebody asked me a question. I don't know if you maybe asked it yourself. And they says to me, I think it was one of the CPNs that comes to the house. And he says, if you knew what you'd be like, Scott, when you left, but you joined up, I went in a heartbeat. I did it over again in a heartbeat. I loved it, Andy, you know what I mean? The, yeah. best, the best 60 years of my life. All right, you're going to have trauma there. Because in the army, there's, you know I mean? you've got to see things. Like he says, we said off camera, you're, you've got to see things. Yeah. That are going to impact your life forever, you know what I mean? And that's that's 60 years in your life. Or what, your time set, whatever. Can you never go to forget that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, it's how you adapt and how you control that a bit better. And I think also your stuff, watching your stuff and getting the help I've got, I think, well, wait a minute, no, they're right, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I mean, I think, the, I think the Army has come a long way uh, and the emergency services have come a long way as well uh, in terms of preparing, psychologically preparing people for trauma uh, and preparing people for, for how, how they're going to react. Um, yeah. And society as a whole, you know, the building industry, so the building industry in this country has a horrendous uh, figures on suicide. Why massive? But but it doesn't even make the headlines. No. You know, crane driver commits suicide. Isn't he going to be in the front page of the sun? But if a soldier or a veteran does it, then it's that's, news. That's for headlines, guy. So, but but I know some guys that are in the kind of health and safety side of the construction industry. And they've made real good progress and leaps forward and getting blokes to talk. You know, three words, blokes to talk. And okay. if we can if we can achieve that and, and you know you and I talk in the night, if that if that can achieve that for one person, then that's a success. I am you know. like I says help one person, I'll be happy, eh? you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm selling it. And that's my aim with this platform today, that Andy. I mean, you know, it's trying to help you progress well. So I think what you're doing is amazing, like, you know what I mean? And even I spoke about my partner about you. I said I Andy was a, a great leader, you know what I mean? But something when I used to sit and watch you, and they were like, I, I want to be him. You know what I mean? And some of the guys like that, and they've also you, you hear stories but people talk. I don't want to say that, you know what I mean? These people are not are, are, are in the past, they're in the end of the day I was there, I know. I see my many eyes, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, but some of the stuff that's you've, you've been doing, some of your slides and that, even them. But in the end of the day, it's, uh, it's fantastic. You know what I mean? Really good. Well, you know, if we, if we can share share our abilities yep. and our common uh, abilities, then we're going to be stronger. Uh, you know, the, the department that I work in now, uh, our motto is stronger together because we don't have all the answers as individuals. But when we add all them wee bits together, we're stronger together. Oh, you're a good team. You know, it's like, it's like a football team. 
you know, if you had 11 goalkeepers and you get beat every Saturday, <laughs> you know, <That's> <laughs> you need, you, you need different people, but they need to communicate in order to work together. Um, so the next bit uh, of the mindset is the E, uh, yeah. and that's excitement around growth. So people talk about um, goal setting and smart goals. Yeah. yeah. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant. Yeah. Challenges in that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and time. Yeah. So so specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Okay, that's a smart goal setting. Well, well, I believe and I and I and I use the model of smart air because. All the goals that I set with clients have to be enjoyable and rewarding as well. Because you need to be excited about the growth. Because if you're excited, then you'll be energetic and you'll be more determined and you'll achieve it. Because without excitement, do you really care? It's impossible to be passionate without excitement uh, in my kind of view. Um, so that's why you know you've got to be excited about this uh, around this growth, yeah. and that's why when I'm working with clients, it's all about their requirement. It's what's important to them, because if it's important to you, then you'll be excited about it, you'll be passionate about it, and you'll be driven, and you will achieve it. Yeah. If it's about if it's important to me, then it's probably not going to work, because I'm not the one that's trying to grow. It's you. Um. The next one is to take and retain control. Now, there's a lot of people in the world that are kind of what I call passengers in life, and and they just kind of go with the flow. So they're kind of just like uh, I don't know an empty an empty water ball in a stream, and they just kind of bob along, and you know they just go down the stream. Um, you need to take control. As I said, take the bull by the horns and you need to retain control because only you can drive your growth and only you can control your mindset. So if you take control of your mindset and retain control of your mindset, because, you know, the, at the start, we talked about maximizing positive self-talk. Somebody might be trying to say, that's never going to work. That's not going to work. Oh, you're wasting your time there. But you're in control of your mindset. So you can block that out and you can say to them, why do you think it's not going to work? I wouldn't chin them off entirely because no. if you say to them, why do you think it's not going to work? They might point out a, a flaw in your plan. And if you know about the flaw in your plan, then you go, hey, thanks for that feedback. Now I know about it, it's definitely going to work because I'm going to make sure that that doesn't harm. It's, it's for you and them, so it's a positive as well. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so it's definitely it's a positive. So, so, you know, feedback, people say that you can get praise or you can get criticism. For me, it's just feedback. Yeah. Whether you agree, disagree, nod, uh, shake your head, you know, give me the thumbs up, give me the fingers, wh whatever you want to do. It's just feedback. And, and I will take that feedback and I will squeeze all the positivity I can out of it. And, and I'll turn it on its head. Yep. Because I'm in control. And, and that, them all added together is mindset. Uh, and I'll go back to the kind of start, as I said. That's the most powerful part uh, in, in any journey. Um, you know, um, Olympians will tell you gold medals are won in there every time. Yeah. Every gold medal is won in there. Doesn't matter the sport, doesn't matter the discipline, it's all in the mindset because your body will give up long before your mind. You need to have the mind that says, I'm no giving up. I'm going to keep going. So, go on, Scott. 
they, they're just, just all makes like every slide ever when you're doing it on there, just everything comes together. The, the mindset of that, just like you say, it just finishes everything off. Eh? The, the, just the, the way you want your life to go, the, the way I want to be now, that's exactly what I, where I want to be. Eh? You know what yeah. I mean? It's, I mean, you, you know, the, these are all kind of, um, they're all models that, that I use, but as you say, they're all interwoven. Yeah. So all my kind of models of self-confidence, mindset, they're like the Olympic rings. So they all join into each other and they're all linked. But mindset is really at the heart uh, of everything that we do. Um, can you move to the last one? Yeah. That's what changed on it. So, so the last one um, it is an offer. Uh, as it says, um, yeah. you know, uh, I will do uh, a free, no commitment, no holes, uh, you know, yeah. no handcuffs involved, um, 30 minute introduction coaching session. Yeah, I see that's quite good. I see that on the slide there. And, you know, if you use the QR code, um, that'll take you to my Facebook page. You can send me an email. Uh, the email's there in blue. My YouTube channel's there. My LinkedIn's there. Um, but as it says in the bottom in, in, in yellow, just get in touch uh, and start to grow. Start to grow, I see that at the bottom. And, and that's, you know, it, that's when we start. So... Initially, 30 minutes, one-on-one, -on -one, online, and you'll understand me. I'll start to understand you, uh, and then we take it forward from there. I think I'll uh, and that's when we kind of look at what's best for you uh, and, and take it on. I think I'll, obviously, I'll, I'll stop with the Andy, but I think I'll take you up on the, the 30 minutes and see where we go through. Kind of, definitely, I. Because yeah. I, think, I think even my partner would benefit from this as well. Because um, she's sort of obviously a hard time with, with working stuff like that, as you can tell. Yeah, yeah. But I think I this is it's brilliant, like you know what I mean. And I've been watching every video, you know what I mean. And I'll share your feeds and all that and link it to this and put it on me. But I think for cool. me, it's way, the way forward for me, I think, well, I can't do any wrong, I probably benefit from it, you know what I mean. No, it's, exactly. And that's the way I see it. Can you've got to try something, you know what I mean? And I think the help I've got obviously did help, but there's still something that that's my mind, it's that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, I, I would encourage anybody to get in touch with me because uh, I, I guarantee that at the end of the 30 minutes, you will only feel worse. You probably feel better, <laughs> feel better right? I, I guarantee um, it, it will work. Coaching will work um, because I don't do failure uh, and I coach people. Um, and I'm really passionate about people. Yeah. Um, but hey, Scott, th you know, thanks so much for for having us on. Um, and and I do, I, I watch your uh, your kind of drone uh, footage, uh, and I watch the other the other podcast with Paul. Uh, you know, Paul and I come from the same city, and yeah. you know, the, the West Coasters will be complaining that you've had two East Coasters on now. Um, so, <clears throat> but hey. Uh, it, it's great to chat. I definitely, Andy. I just like also like something as simple as that, like with my drone flying, that helps me in the outdoors. Yeah. Eh? It's brilliant. And I, I was doing, I bought a drone. But what the story was, is I was, it was a hobby I was doing. It's quite an expensive hobby, but that's yeah, yeah. that was my plans. But and I got a phone call just before Christmas for DJI. Um, me being me, the boys listening to what is, I went like, yeah, F off, hung up. So the boy phoned back, he went, Look, Scott, I know. I'm going to be flawed that that does happen online stuff like that. But it says, I'm going to tell myself to be seeing one of your videos because I tagged them everything, Andy. Every video that I tagged, DJ in them. Yeah. Tag, 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 tag. And I wasn't wanting nothing. I wasn't expecting nothing. Um, I'm nothing special. If I can date, anybody can date, you know what I mean? Um, but you've done you, it and you're doing it. That's the difference. It's a sight of action. Aye. And he phoned back and I kept going. I kept at it. So it's that mindset again. And he says, I understand what I'm going to tell you is if you put anything, the one of your drones, doesn't matter if it's Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram, there's a serial number. And I'm going to tell you that serial number. It's like a DJI, the number they be spot on, Andy. He's like, this is the plan, Scott. Um, we're going to send you drones. And all we're going to do is put a review up. And what we see, how you get 10%. I went, pardon? 
No, I'm, I'm still, but I'm thinking, no, nah, this is this isn't real. Yeah, yeah. Until the stuff came through the poster, so I've got my drones sitting there. Um, I've got, I've got four, and it's off of them. I just can't even believe it. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Brilliant. Right. Like, if you put your mind to something, like your mindset, anything's possible. Eh? And I wasn't doing it for nothing. I was doing it as a hobby because I like doing it. Okay. But now it's, I think it's going to be a full-time job, and uh, the way it's going now, like, yeah. and I've heard people asking me, like, for the deer stalking, real estate, taking photographs and all that. So yeah. it's worked out. That's a positive. It's worked out great. You know no, what I mean? Exactly. But but the thing is, you know, you took the decisive action. Yeah. And and then came the opportunity. And I've took it, and obviously, like people, yeah. like, I've heard, like I've heard people saying all oh, this, this, and that. I said, I but I wasn't doing it for nothing else. I was doing it for to help me. Yes. Yeah. But you can't fly a drone indoors. You're outside. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you're engaging with people, and it's got me a few jobs like real estate and taking site inspections and stuff like that with the big yeah. one. Uh, it's, so it's worked out really well when I'm I'm lucky. I've got lucky, eh? you know what I mean? Good. Um, Aye, but, but, you know, uh, I mean, people say, oh, I got lucky. Luck's generated. Aye. Luck is generated because it's fortune. And, and you've got to take, you took that little step and then somebody else has invested in you. So, as I say to everybody, uh, if you want somebody to invest in you, you need to invest in yourself. Aye. Uh, and you've done that, you know. And, and I do, I wish you all the best with it, with, with the kind of drone uh, business going forward. Because they're talking about as well up here, like, like medication to the islands. So they're talking about like doing a big drone and, and all that stuff will go like to Mull, because it's quite difficult for these people to come over sometime. Right, yeah, yeah. So they're talking about doing stuff like that. So that's an option, you know what I mean? Cool. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's been bigger and better. These, these are the drones. I couldn't believe it when they're coming they're through the pandemic. I mean, dro drones are the future, aren't they? You know, they're, they're not going to—they're not going to get less popular. No, it's, it's a hobby. It's got massively, massively, and I've noticed yeah. during lockdown and stuff like that. After that, the, the sales have just been through the roof. You mm. know what I mean? But also DJI—they've given me a contract, and, that, and I'm I'm thankful. I can't be more thankful to them. You know what I mean? And it's helped me. Something simple as that. Just a wee thing. But to me, it's quite a big thing because it's my work that's going on my platform and stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, uh, it's, been, it's, it's been a good good year and a bit for me with these things, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's worked out great. Cool. Um, thanks very much for coming on, mate. That was... Thanks. That no was worries. 